Julian Assange of WikiLeaks, which U.S. intelligence agencies view as a non-state hostile intelligence service that played a role in Russiagate, got in on the game, tweeting on Friday, is Robert Mueller a dirty cop? Hmm. Of course, all these attacks won't stop the FBI and Mueller from digging into the dealings of Team Trump. NBC News reports that the special counsel is using those two grand juries to obtain records and further his investigation. And from what we know so far, it appears that Mueller and the FBI are leaving no stone unturned. As of this week, subpoenas have been issued for records of business transactions by former Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort and former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. And according to Reuters, subpoenas have also been issued in connection with a June 2016 meeting between Donald Trump's son, Donald Trump Jr., his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, Paul Manafort, a Russian lawyer with ties to the Kremlin, and other Russian nationals. And the New York Times reports that investigators have also asked the White House for documents related to Flynn and have questioned witnesses about whether he was on the payroll of the Turkish government while also working for Trump. NBC News has not independently verified the Times report. But while the investigation continues to develop completely out of his control, Donald Trump increasingly finds himself boxed in on Capitol Hill as well. The United States Senate, with the full support of Republicans who until now have generally protected Trump at every turn, have blocked him from potentially replacing his attorney general with somebody who could end the investigation while Congress takes its August break. In other words, Trump finds himself mired in problems that no stump speech, no friendly cable channel, and no tweet can fix. Joining me now, MSNBC contributor Malcolm Nance, Republican strategist Noel Nikpour, Maria Teresa Kumar, a voto Latino, intelligence analyst Naveed Jamali, and former White House ethics lawyer Richard Painter. Thank you all for being here. And Naveed, I'm going to come right to you on this. CNN reported on Friday that uh, Robert Mueller is pursuing uh, information about Donald Trump's financial ties to Russia. A quote from that piece, sources described an investigation that has widened to focus on possible financial crimes, some unconnected to the 2016 elections. And, you know, just take us into sort of spy world and the way that Russia works. Why would that matter? Um, financial ties unrelated specifically to the, re the election. Well, this is, this is, you know, everyone has said follow the money, and this seems to be the crux of, of a lot of the speculation, and I think it's a, it's a logical road to go down. I think, Joy, what's going to end up happening, the, the big question here is, what if Mueller comes across something, a crime, that isn't directly, uh, a, you know, <coughs> attributed to the Russia investigation? And I know it has to, you know, Mueller is limited to investigating things that are, that are set forth in his mandate. If it's not something in his mandate, then he has to either ask permission to investigate or refer it to the DOJ. This is going to be an interesting political battle. So, you know, this question of collusion, this question of financial ties, if they don't bear out, which we don't know what Mueller knows, if they don't bear out, but there are these second crimes. You know, we talked about Flynn, we talked about Kushner. Let's just for a second assume that those, those are, in fact, standalone events that did occur, that do rise to the level of criminality, but they don't trace back to Russia. What happens then? And I think that is a real danger to broil us into sort of a larger political debate. You know, on one level, you can't let these crimes go, but on the other level, if they don't trace back to Russia, there's going to be a, a pretty big pushback to continue down this path. Well, well Richard Payne, then I'll, I'll throw that to you. What does happen if, let's say, in the course of this investigation, uh, the Mueller team were to find crimes that were not related directly to the election, but that go to things like money laundering? We've heard lots of stories of Donald Trump doing business with Russian, uh, we call them oligarchs, but businessmen um, who've uh, allegedly tried to launder dirty money through his properties, etc. If those kinds of crimes are found and they're not directly related to the election, what happens? Well, they'll still get prosecuted if we're within the statute of limitations, either by Robert Mueller's team or they'll be referred over to the Department of Justice. We do prosecute serious crimes in this country. Uh, the special counsel uh, should focus on the money trail. Now, you know, we're not going to do what we did 20 years ago and have the special counsel get involved in the president's sex life and whether he lied under oath about his sex life. But if it's about money and it's about Russians, he's going to pursue it. And the White House has got to stop attacking Robert Mueller. And I'm getting tired of hearing Kellyanne Conway and the others attacking Robert Mueller, who was our FBI director when I was in the Bush White House. I've been a Republican for 30 years, and many of us are very proud of the service that Robert Mueller has uh, done for his country over many, many years. And uh, these attacks on the special prosecutor uh, are uncalled for. The policy in the Bush White House was not to comment on pending criminal investigations. No comment by the president or anybody else. And they would do themselves an enormous favor if they focused on doing their job 
and focusing on policy while Robert Mueller does his job. Yeah, and, and you know, we, Malcolm, you also have the New York Times reporting on Friday that so Mueller is looking into various things uh, about Michael Flynn's finances, uh, who was paying him, right. whether Turkey is one of the countries that were paying him. So that's not directly related to Russia, but how does the financial sort of entanglements of this team relate back potentially to Russiagate? Yeah, you know, uh, Every time I come on, I have to explain to people, because I've been meeting lots of people who say, it's just an FBI investigation, Hillary had one. No, it is a national counterintelligence investigation. From June of last year, they started looking for Americans who were cooperating, coordinating, and communicating with Russian intelligence officers, and by, by extension, the Kremlin. The first thing that U.S. counterintelligence is going to do is we're going to scrub your little financial world. We're going to throw a circle around you we're gonna go back 20 years and they are going to determine were you picked up in a dangle that's where they hang out money in front of you or some other inducement there's suspicion that Donald Trump's Palm Beach mansion purchase uh, I believe that was you know for the sale of for the, the sale got like of a, 50 million more right he, he won 50 million dollars profit on that in a building that was raised soon afterwards that could have been the dangle to see is trump a player is he the kind of guy that if we drop money in front of him he'll do whatever we want then after that you have miss universe we as you know counterintelligence people assume that about every individual that they meet whether it was my security clearance naveed security clearance all of when they see us they determine do we have a financial link to a foreign intelligence agency they must do this and it explains why he hired one ex FBI counterintelligence director and 16 financial crime lawyers. Right, right. And, and, and well, you know, for the Republican Party, this has been sort of an, an inextricable, sort of a Gordian knot, right? Yeah. Because they want Donald Trump there to sign the legislation that they want to pass, yep. and they want to protect him. Um, you also have the Dallas Morning News reporting that you've got some Republicans who've <clears> taken <throat> money from, you know, this or that big Ukrainian sort of Russian-connected person, right? So they're not exactly clean hands when it comes to taking money from similar kinds of people. Yeah. Uh, and so, but at the same time, how long can they hang on to a guy whose approval rating, even when you get to Republicans, is now down at 76%, which sounds high. Mm -hmm. except that it had been 88 percent. Well, you know, I, th I think a lot of people are wondering what's going on with the brand of the Republican Party with Donald Trump, because Donald Trump has his own brand. And I, I wrote a column, uh, basically, that said, you know, we've got the gold-encrusted elephant, which is Donald Trump, and then you have the old gray elephant, which is the Republican Party. Who wraps around who? And now, I, you know, with Donald Trump's personality, I really think that he is changing the Republican Party party's brand, I don't really think the Republican Party's gray elephant brand is changing Donald Trump. You remember yeah. when he got elected, he said, you know, all this is for show, you know, basically, he didn't say that, but he said, you know, when I get elected, I'll, I'll be more presidential, right. I understand. That's not the case. He's still doing his 3 a.m. tweets. Now, that's fine. That's Donald Trump. That's who he is. But I'm not so sure that's the Republican Party. And like I've said this before, pundits like me, we go on the shows and we talk. It puts us in a very different, uh, a strange position because we we want to protect the president. I mean, this is the, the president of the United States. He's a Republican. And we want to also be respectful and protect the party. But sometimes they go against each other. So it's almost like, uh-oh, do we yeah. just choose to go behind him? Or do we choose to go and take, take the party? What do we do? And at the same time, you have a party, um, you know, Maria Teresa, that is by wrapping itself around Donald Trump, wrapping itself around this idea that it is actually okay for a campaign, a presidential campaign, mm -hmm. to seek help, not just from a foreign government, but from a hostile foreign government. Mm -hmm. That has been mind-blowing, I think, to a lot of Republicans. Well, and it, I think if we first lay out the fact that Donald Trump is not part of the Republican spectrum, the traditional spectrum, that, and ideologically, but the fact that the Republicans are be going behind him, it because it's because they actually want to hold on to power. So they're putting party over country, and that is dangerous. And I think that there's a lot of Republicans that are no longer in office scratching their heads, saying, "What is going on? Like, why aren't you actually standing up to him?" Especially when increasingly members of your base are telling you that they want governance. Yeah. And this idea that folks are going after civil service, they're uh, civil servants because they're leakers. They're civil servants because they believe in the institutions in which they serve, and they want to put again country over party. And Richard, you know. You you, as probably the longest serving, you know, member of the Republican Party that's on our panel, certainly, um, is that is that the disconnect that you feel? Because it does feel strange, you know, as somebody who's old enough to remember when Ronald Reagan existed, right? That this posture. <laughs> 
toward Russia that is now sort of washing over the party and part of the base, it is weird. And I, and I wonder, you know, how, how you sort of receive it as a Republican. Well, I, I, I'm old enough to remember I was 12 years old when Nixon <laughs> uh, was forced out of office. And I'll tell you, he did a lot of damage to the Republican Party, but the damage <laughs> being done by Donald Trump is much more severe. Uh, the Republican Party uh, has stood uh, for a strong national defense, has stood uh, for uh, our independence of foreign interference in our elections and in our democracy. We've always been vigilant about the attempts by the Russians to destabilize the American uh, 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 political system and also uh, Western democracies. And Trump is focusing only on one person, Donald Trump. Uh, and he, uh, he was never really a Republican. And uh, he took over our party. A lot of people in the Republican Party do not support him <coughs> quietly. They are thinking very seriously about whether Mike Pence would be a lot better president for the next three, three and a half years. Uh, uh, because if we have much more of this, I think we're in very, very serious trouble. But, but, and one little bit of pushback on that, and, and well, because he, he is a Republican in the sense that he understood that the base really wanted policies that go after immigrants, that go after Muslims. It's very popular well, with the base. Well, that's not our base. That's not our base. That's not a Republican base. That's a racist base of people who for years didn't even vote Republican. Uh, that is not the base of the Republican Party. We don't want those people in the Republican Party because they're they're not going to make America great again. They're just going to want to turn this country into a racist, all-white, dominated regime. And that's not what the Republican Party is about. This is a party of Abraham Lincoln. And so I do not want people describing Steve Bannon, Breitbart News, and their supporters as the base of the Republican Party. Yeah, and yet they've chosen, I mean, they are attached to the party now, Noel. Well, you know, every, every kooky group looks for, you know, an attachment to a party. <clears throat> but what the, the surprising thing for me was the fact that I really believed that Donald Trump was a moderate. I really kind of believed that he was socially liberal <clears throat> and uh, economically fit on the Republican platform conservative. I was very shocked to see about the LGBTQ ban. The, the, the transgender ban in the military. Uh, I, that, that's one thing that to me, I, I don't know why, but I, I really was like, what? I mean, I came away wearing the suit of the Riddler. I mean, like, I, this is not the Donald Trump that, you know, that, that a lot of New Yorkers knew right. as somebody that was extremely tolerant, especially, you know, with Ivanka. Well, except know. on housing where you <laughs> want the black people to move into <laughs> Well, okay. <laughs> but, but, but you know what I mean? The, <clears throat> this was very surprising to me. And I actually thought because of him being more identified to me with uh, the, the moderate side of our party, that he would, <clears throat> that we had a chance to kind of pull <clears throat> more of the moderates into the spotlight and change, <clears throat> excuse me, the Republican Party brand as more of a, a kind of a tolerant, come one, come all, and that we're kind of being more open-minded, and then the LGBT. The yeah, you know, but I think it depends on how you experienced him. I think if you were black in the 80s and early well, 90s and you experienced Donald Trump <laughs> in the Central Park Five, you kind of knew this was the guy, well, but anyway. Right. Jordan, you know, I was a Republican most of my career. I mean, you know, I was, I was socially liberal, but hard on defense. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm right up there with Colin Powell. Yeah. And we're both flaming liberals now. I mean, the party has shifted to this nativist base of, you know, uh, from the 1950s and 60s, and they want to go back there. But the worst part is, I mean, Richard Painter put it right. There was a time where we're all old enough to remember where the Republican Party stood for defense. The Republican Party stood for NATO, stood for a strong United States and strong financial interests yep. interest worldwide, and most importantly, stood against Russia communist influence. Now they adore the ex-director of the KGB. Yeah. Adore but, him. But what happened yeah. to and the working man? What happened to I the working man? part of the man? challenge is that we're, you, we're looking at Donald Trump as if he were in a vacuum. He didn't just happen overnight. No. We had a group, we had a, a, an effort, and a propaganda machine that was basically conditioning Americans for the last 12, 15 years and helped rise the Tea Party, which is part of this. But what happened yeah. to the working man? Well, I mean, the working man rallied and got behind that they base. They did get behind I mean, him. So what about they that? Got behind him. Well, I'm going to give you the last uh, word now because you uh, didn't get into too much, but because I wonder just from the point of view um, of where you come from, as well, you as well as Malcolm, um, you know, how destabilizing is it for people who've spent probably their careers um, fighting against what Russia is trying to do to find that the commander in chief, that the guy at the top, he's never said you a know, bad word about Vladimir Putin and he can't seem to. 
Yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, enjoy. We have gone back and forth on this. You know, on text and things. The thing that I've always kind of gone back to is the protection of the institutions, and I'm really concerned that. What this is is a moment that we're all in a car on the Major Deegan in August with the kids screaming in the back and bumper to bumper traffic. And there's that temptation to go in the breakdown lane, to go around all that traffic. And there goes that speeding black SUV in the breakdown lane. And we all stay in the traffic because we know it's the right thing to do or whether we're scared of seeing a cop around the corner. Those institutions function the same way. Whether the, by design, you know, you, if you're in an institution, you, you sort of suffer the, the rules. But what you kind of fall back to is that the application of those rules rules are applied well, evenly, equally. Yeah. And when you see someone like Jared Kushner, who has done things that would disqualify Malcolm or I for a security clearance within a heartbeat to get a hard pass, well, that is fundamentally, it doesn't have to do with Republicans or Democrats, it is fundamentally undermining the institutions. It is saying that there are two separate tranches of rules that the President of the United States can be held to a separate standard and his family can be held to a separate standard, but people like Malcolm and I are not. And that does have an impact to the institutions, the yeah. people that work at them, and that is going to have a lasting damage damage to this country, whether you're Republican or Democrat. Indeed. Mm -hmm. it, well said. Well said, my friend. All right, Malcolm Nance is sticking around. Thank you. This is a great panel. Noel Nikpur, uh, Maria Teresa Kumar, Naveed Jamali, Richard Painter. You guys are great. We'll have you all back. Thank you. And coming up, the deep state strikes back.